you heard there from uh, the Ada, Adi Myro and uh, the General Director General Coalition of Nigerian Youth on Security and Safety. Um, Ada, uh, Adi, I keep saying, I don't know why I'm saying Ada. If people shouldn't get the wrong idea, please. Yes. <laughs> Adi uh, Myro, you're welcome to the studio. Uh, we're looking at uh, fuel, uh, Naira scarcity, security implications. That's what we're looking at. And uh, with your group there, well, I'll, I'll allow the, 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 the lady in the studio here uh, sh shoot the first question, basically. Uh, over to you. Okay. So um, we're looking at the Naira scarcity and then security and the implications. Um, People are just thinking that um, Naira scarcity, of course, one way or the other, directly or indirectly, everyone is feeling the distance. But how will this amount or lead to insecurity in the country? Uh, the truth remains that uh, the CBN on her own mm. was not well prepared. In times of local sensitization on this issue of Naira note, you know, a situation whereby somebody in the village has been asked to go and submit everything he or she has mm. to the bank. And there was no replacement. You are putting that person in a serious danger. That's the truth. So now, those in the local communities has actually put everything they have. Now to get the new one, to not go back to their business, has become very studious. Now some will even spend 30 days in the bank without getting 5,000 naira. Mm. It, so, it is so disheartening. But the truth is this. As good as the policy is, from the beginning and inception of it, wow, we all accepted it. We believe it's the best way to go. Because a situation whereby a single person is having about one trillion naira of the old naira note in his house, dormant and dormant without any usefulness, at the detriment of the citizens, we felt it is a welcome idea that the new naira note was coming on board. But the truth is that the CBN on her own was not too wise enough to have involved the civil so uh, society organizations, especially CONISA, which is supposed to be the mother organization of every organization that focuses more on security. Because CONISA is the umbrella body of Nigerian youth on security matters. We interfere on anything that has to do with youth on security issues. Mm. Now, our duty is to make sure that the bridge the gap is bridged, whereby there must be inflow information from the source to the last person. Mm. Most of the committee that our government have set up, you will never see youth being involved. Even the security committee they are setting up on, uh, on election, you never see youth being involved. They felt the youth can only be used for dirty job. So if you are not saying, where are thou? We are not saying, here we are. We are available to monitor the bank. You say you are giving the bank 30 million every day. We, we are ready to monitor the bank to make sure that that 30 million for that day is exhausted without a kept over. Because at the end of the day, we discovered that this money, when being given to the bank, they can give out about 10 million. The remaining 20 million, they audit and sell it out to politicians. In fact, I was coming back from Lagos about two weeks ago. I was in uh, Iwo Road in Ibadan. That was where I was able to buy 50,000. I yeah. bought 50,000 for 75,000 Naira. Well, I, I don't understand. I, I need to the new Naira. Yeah. The yeah. new Naira note. Because yeah. I needed it. That you bought it for 75,000. 75,000 Naira in the world. Road. That's with the okay, old that's notes. Means. No, I paid, I paid 75,000 Naira to be given 50,000. That means you paid 25,000 Naira. Yes, exactly. That is how bad it is. That is how bad it is. How did these people get it in large quantity? So the lacuna is from the bank, not from the CBN. And we are also saying that in as much that there is shortage of this new Naira note. But Mr. Ade, in all fairness, I, I have friends who are bankers as well. Okay. And I know that even in the midst of this, sometimes we, we call them, hey, hey, dude, can you help me get so, so amounts? And they tell you outrightly that, look, this is like, I have a very close friend who is um, a manager of staff in one of those banks. And he okay. said, look, this is the amount we get every day. In his branch particularly, he told mm -hmm. me that, look, when I get the money, immediately we put everything, we deploy everything in the ATM. How much did that. I get? Well, I, I can't remember the figure he told me. I can't remember the figure. So I, I just CBN I don't want to speak gives every bank 30 million every day. 30 million every day. 
30 million naira. So the EFCC and the ICPC cannot do the work alone. Because their information will not get to the last youth. We want to be involved. We want to be part of the process. Okay. So, that we, so that that sincerity, we want to know if it is the CBN that is telling Nigerians lies or if it is the banks that is telling Nigerians lies. Now, Zenith Bank is shut down. But for us, the owner of uh, Senate Bank and others that should be prepared to answer questions. At this difficult period, you are locking, you are, you are, you are, you are shutting down your branches. I think their are, are challenges are definitely yeah. owed to technical, I mean, internet issues yes. and all um, of that. Now, those. this is another area we should look at. We are talking about the, uh, uh, um, uh, we are talking about cashless policy. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at our, our network, our technology, we also get to discover that the CBN did not look deep well in that angle. Yesterday, I tried making some transactions. The money was deducted from my account, but it does not uh, enter the account of the person yeah. I sent money to. Mm. And I have been debited. The money has been moved from my account. Now, up to this morning, some of them are here to get the alert. So it means that these areas too have to be well looked into for the benefit of those in the local community. For some of us who stay in cities, it can be very easy for us. It can be very easy, just like you have a friend you can easily call and get it for. Not everybody has that opportunity. So we are now saying that the Central Bank of Nigeria should see need why the civil society organization and CODISA should be listening to our the, the 25 men committee because we picked heads of civil society and uniform organizations in Nigeria, cutting across Manowa, Peace Corps, Boy Scout, Boys Brigade, Salvation Army, MOD, Royal Ambassador, and others. The National Youth Council of Nigeria, Nigeria Youth Parliament, even from the student angle, we are in touch with the NANS president to see that Protest is not needed at this point in time. Solution, how we can do a follow-up over it is what we need. Going to protest and block the road, the same people want to fight for, will be restricting them of not going to their places of duty, where they can actually get one error, two error. That means we are creating more problems mm. by embarking on protest. So why not look at the solution and say we have the solution? We have what to take to make sure that this situation dies down naturally. So give us that opportunity. Let us work together. We okay. monitor the bank. We know what is happening in the bank. Then we'll be able to take a step from there. That, okay, this is the problem. People are not really following instruction of lining up and it is giving the bank at uh, the bank uh, 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 officials uh, serious attention. On our own, we can deploy men there. Peace Corps of Nigeria has more than 180,000 personnel. So you know, you know, yeah, you, okay. exactly. Go, go yes, ahead. I'd like to ask, yeah. yes, concerning the bank, I just want to add to it that in my very presence yeah. here in this Abuja, a bank loaded an ATM, and the banker, immediately they finished loading that ATM, the banker went there with multiple cards and he was withdrawing immediately. So I had to threaten. I, asked, I said, what are you doing there? He said, um, that is withdrawing. I said, you cannot use multiple cards to withdraw. He said, who am I to say so? He is a banker. I said, okay, if they dare you, continue with what you are doing. And he left immediately and ran away. Okay, so that is one individual trying to, you know, um, <laughs> play a game. Play, exactly. So many so, of them so, are so doing so that me, Yes, that is me trying to be a task, a one-man task force. Now... You have your CS, your organization constituted a task force to be monitoring yeah. and evaluating and yeah. all that. Is that not, um, I don't know, is there any legal backing for that? Or is, there, is it not, you know... Against the law. Exactly. Now, um, with, uh, uh, these names will be sent directly to the IG by Monday and the director of the SSS. Now, to create an awareness, it is not left for them to now call us for them to work alongside with us. If they're not ready to work with us, we work because it is a registered organization. And we have our, uh, our aims and objectives that were actually approved by the CAC. Now, the Youth Council of Nigeria, the National Youth Council of Nigeria has the power to constitute a youth security committee because it is an institution of its own. That is the apex youth body 
in Nigeria. So it can constitute a committee to checkmate, to ask questions, to do a follow-up on any policy that have to do with citizenries, mm. especially the youth. Because whatsoever that is not well managed now can lead to serious anarchy. And that is why we are there as leaders to make sure that this anarchy did not occur. Because when it occurs, even those in the presidency and the National Assembly are not saved. Just like you can see, some of them cannot go to their villages anymore. Mm -hmm. They are being stoned because there is no love. There is no entanglement between this, our uncles in the National Assembly and in the villa. Because they felt that they are deeming gods. Now, that relationship is what we want to redefine. But then I need to quickly ask this. You know, sometimes when we have these conversations, we are quick to always put the blame or apportion the blame to government institutions. Okay. But then across the country, in different places, we've seen situations where people have made attempts to actually raid banks or to mm -hmm. threaten even the lives of bankers and all of that. What are you doing also as an organization to uh, intervene in that sense, to uh, have citizens realize that, look, attacking a banker is not what will solve the problem. And away from that, sometimes you find that people are deliberately disorderly. If you go to, a, to, a, to, to an ATM, for instance, where people yeah. are supposed to queue up, yeah. everybody wants to be the first person. Yeah. And you know for a fact that if you queue up properly, uh, whenever your turn, it gets your turn to do mm -hmm. make any withdrawal. So what are you doing in that sense as well to reach out to, to Nigerians as well in that, in that respect? No, just like I said, if we are involved now, we have organizations under us. CONESA has about 67 registered youth bodies under CONESA, both uniform and non-uniform. And I was just making an example of Peace Corps just now. It costs the CBN nothing to call the commandant, the, the commandant general of Peace Corps and say, please, at this point in time, we need your men to assist the banks. If you go to some of these banks, you can only see just two, three police officers. Mm. What can they do? They can't do anything. But the Peace Corps is not empowered by lawyers. No, without their volunteers. Yeah. That, is the, that is where volunteerism yeah, volunteer. is coming on board. That is where volunteerism mm -hmm. is coming on board. Volunteers are meant to assist and complement. But it is only in Nigeria we don't take volunteerism serious. We see them as threats. No, they should not be seen as threats. Because if you are not doing your job well, somebody should have that infantry, you know, that boldness to tell you, no, this thing is not being done the way it should be done. Let us assist you to make sure that you succeed. You take your glory at the end of the day. We've succeeded in doing a lot of things in the, in the last two years. In the last two years, we've recorded a lot of successes. We've written reports, and the DSSS work on it, and successes are, are achieved. I'm telling you sincerely, most sincerely this morning, that if the CBN, Nigerian police, and DSSS should concur and agree and be ready to work with us, some of this queue will be mainstreamed. Properly mainstreamed. We send our men to these places. I see the security. The security agencies there will be in charge. Okay. The, the volunteers we only support. Okay, let's look at take another scenario for instance. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with a situation where you walk into the, to, to a filling station where because right now as it is, I, I have heard that Nigerians are beginning to get uh, the, 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 the queues in our filling stations mm -hmm. are beginning to ease. Yeah. Uh, there's some fuel supply and all of that. But then you drive in with your car, and then these guys are telling you that they don't accept the very fuel attendants who know mm. that it's difficult to come about cash are finding difficult. Will outrightly tell you that they are not accepting POS except cash. And then I heard a report yesterday that they don't. Um, what what was that thing that happens now? Mm -hmm. That um, they are actually reselling the cash. To, to customers. To, to customers. Yes, exactly. We'll go on a break. We'll see this report. And when we come back, you take or you answer that question. Stick around.
With the rise in cases of kidnapping, banditry, cold clashes, bombings, and other acts of terror, it seems the current state of insecurity is relatively higher than ever before. Insecurity affects us all. It affects everything from our personal freedom, how we travel, from the cost of goods and services, to even our physical and mental health. Therefore, we have a duty to help security agencies protect us better wherever and whenever we can. If you see or hear something suspicious in your neighborhood, don't keep it to yourself, but be sure to say something to the right authorities. Remember, you could just be saving a life and that life you save could be yours. This is a message from the Silverbird Group. Yes, we still have Ade Myro here in the studio with us, and we have been discussing about Phil Naira scarcity, security implications. Uh, so b back to you, uh, Ade. <coughs> you know, you see, the issue of the Philly station is that uh, Nigerians love using every little opportunity to extort themselves. Mm. That's where we'll find ourselves. And that is where this issue of the policy maker having that uh, grant of a proper follow-up. In Nigeria today, do we agree with me that the numbers of security personnel we have as a country, both Nigerian police, army, and others, is not up to a million? Mm. You can go and do your research on this. Now, with this, it goes a very long way to say that some of these police stations are properly monitored. Yesterday, the IG directed that the security agencies should help in also monitoring these police stations and others. Some of these officers are hungry. When they get to these police stations and uh, they get there, the bank, the manager of the place, call them inside, give them a hundred thousand naira, they leave the place. That is the situation we find ourselves. This is happening. That, that, that is the situation we find ourselves as a country. Is this somebody that you are, you are, you, you did not pay well? You're not sending him such an error. He's an opportunity to make money to take care of his family. What he do? That's the situation. Some of these are officers that are actually betraying the policy. It's not because they wanted to do it, but because of the, what their family is passing through. A situation whereby uh, an inspector of uh, Nigerian police is not getting up to 150000 And look at the cost of commodity. And somebody is there collecting about 20 million as salary. And this is somebody who is risking his life, carrying arms up and down. So what we are saying is this, so that we not digress, that the situation is so bad that everybody is hungry. Everybody wants to make it by all means. From any angle it comes. They don't care the consequences. So all we are saying now is this, that with this 25 men Nigerian Youth Tax Force across all CSOs, it will go a very long way to monitor and take it up against any filling station or any bank that is not doing the needful. So it is now the duty of DSSS after listening to our press uh, conference and after going through the names to now ask us and begin to check methods. We want to know your power. We want to know what you can do. Mm -hmm. It is now their duty. But one thing we know is that Neither the DSSS nor the Nigerian police can stop this tax force because we are out there. We are ready to make sure the agony of Nigerians and citizens at large is reduced. If we continue this way, mm -hmm. I want to tell you, 2023 the election might not hold. Is this somebody that could not travel from his destination to his village? We, how would the person go and uh, uh, cast vote? Oh, well, we'll uh, get to that later. Yes. No, that is yes. the truth. But yes, yeah. what I'd like to ask is that... Um, what power does the task force have to actually implement any form of punitive measure? Uh, the, the reason I'm saying this is because the ICPC, EFCC had earlier reported that they caught some people who were, you know, s selling and ordering new Naira notes. Then we've had laws where they say don't smoke in public, don't abuse the Naira, and nothing happens at the end of the day. Nothing happens. So this is your task force and, um, you know, getting, um, tr uh, trying to make everything go right. How would the punitive now, measure be implemented? Now, like we said, yeah. ours is to report back 
to appropriate agency that ought to take such a case up. Ours is to monitor it, to make sure that such a person caught in that act does not go scot free. My dear sister, anything that is at the public domain mm. is very difficult, eh? especially when intellectuals and intelligent persons are involved. In this tax force, we have about six lawyers among the tax force. Six lawyers, not just quack, lawyers that understand the law, mm. that understand what to do, how to do, and where to do. So it is not, a, it, it is not like the Nigerian youth, it, they will call and give 10 million and say, please, do it as we want. Yes, we might not be as rich as others, but everybody involved in the task force is okay. And it will be very difficult for anybody to come on board and feel that the tax force can be held down. But the truth is this, that we don't have the power to persecute. But the appropriate agency that need to persecute is where we are reporting to and we are doing our follow-up. And our lawyers will take it off from that angle. Why we will continue with other things. And you will begin to see it any moment from now. From Tuesday, immediately we send the names and the details of everybody involved to the DSSS. We'll be expecting the next line of action. Right, Whether so, they invite us okay. or not, we'll start with the banks okay. from Tuesday. So, so let's take a look at um, one final question. Um, because at the end of the day, we're looking at the implication of uh, on security, the impact all of this is happening, uh, having on security. You just mentioned a few minutes ago that um, if this situation continues unabated, then we might have a situation where uh, the elections might not hold. But uh, the, INEC commission, uh, the INEC chairman has made it very clear yesterday after the Council of State meeting, in fact, that was one definitive statement they made um, as regards the election, that the election will hold mm -hmm. regardless of whatever people may think or any other person may think. But what are the other um, security implications this has um, on the Nigerian society in the meantime? And how can we resolve this very quickly? Besides, yes, the committee, the task force you've set up, how can we resolve this quickly so that <coughs> life will get back to normal? In now, the, now, the truth time? is this, that the, the CBN governor has promised the INEC that all their, all their staffs, all their vehicles, they will make sure that uh, they make funds available for INEC. Now, the point is, the point is that if you are making resources available for INEC and resources are not available for the citizenries, hmm. my brother, look at the danger there. Somebody who is staying in Akure and is going to cast votes in Okitipupa, it costs the person about 3,000 naira to travel home. So and such a person, how would the okay. person be able to go? That means you are disenfranchising some certain set of person not to travel home to go and vote because not everybody is in their village. Okay. For instance, I'm in Abuja. I want to travel to my village to go and cast votes. And it will cost me about 7,000 naira to travel home. And I don't have access to it. And you want me to go? That means you are depriving me of my civic rights because of a policy. But yet, I will say in conclusion that this policy is a good one mm. for those fighting against it mm. to help with them. That's to, that to, to me. We we'll actually a have to mind that along Yes, with exactly. Yes. But Few the truth is TV. this. The truth is this. Whosoever is fighting against this policy, that person is an enemy of this country. This policy is a good one. Is a is 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 a plus to the government of President Momo Dubari, but we are pleading to the uh, uh, Inspector General Police, Director of the SSS, to also intensify their effort in making sure that these agencies in charge of the fuel, in charge of the Naira Note, should see reasons why they should intensify their effort, bringing their sincere officers who will join us to make sure that these tensions dies down in the next one week. All right. Then we'll begin to talk about 2023 the election. All right. All right, thank you so much uh, for your time. Ade Mario, Director General, Coalition of Nigerian Youth on Security and Safety Affairs. Uh, it has been quite an enlightening uh, conversation here. Uh, we'll be looking at fuel scarcity, uh, fuel narrow scarcity, security implications. Well, we'll wait and see how the week will turn out uh, from Sunday tomorrow uh, for Nigerians. But, you know, we can only hope that uh, 
you know, this situation is resolved as quickly as possible so that Nigerians can have a bit of respite and have their normal lives back. We'll go on a break and when we come back, we'll go into our second conversation today on the show. Stay well, stick around. With the rise in cases of kidnapping, banditry, cold clashes, bombings and other acts of terror, it seems the current state of insecurity is relatively higher than ever before. Insecurity affects us all. It affects everything from our personal freedom, how we travel, from the cost of goods and services, to even our physical and mental health. Therefore, we have a duty to help security agencies protect us better wherever and whenever we can. If you see or hear something suspicious in your neighborhood, don't keep it to yourself. Be sure to say something to the right.